town of Iowa early this month from the Des Moines Register. For the first time, had Bernie Sanders as the lead contender in the Hawkeye State. Closely trailed by Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, and Joe Biden. Joining us via Skype to discuss the senator's ground game in the state is campaign's Iowa State Director, Misty Rebick. She thanks for being here, Misty. It's great to see you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Missy, tell us a little bit about the senator's strength on the ground in Iowa, what you're seeing. I think the New York Times is even saying that the recent polls may be underestimating uh, your campaign's strength there on the ground. What makes your ground game unique to everybody else? Sure. Well, since the beginning of this campaign, we knew in order to defeat Donald Trump, we have to expand the electorate. Um, so not only talking to everyday voters who are already engaged in the political process, but finding folks who feel apathetic or have been left out for a long time. So our organizing team has been very disciplined and focused for the last eight months um, meeting voters where they're at. So whether that means um, going to the local uh, gas station Casey's and talking to the farmers in the morning about this election and what it means to them, getting them engaged that way, um, tabling outside of a pharmacy to talk to people about their health care, um, obviously doing a lot of the regular things that everybody's doing, talking to voters on the doors and the phones. Um, but we have been very committed um, to not only making sure we make this one of the most well attended caucuses in history, but also to ensure that we are building the largest grassroots multi generational multi racial uh, coalition as possible. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the big conversation in D.C. this week has been about Warren alleging that Senator Sanders said in a private conversation that a woman could not win the presidency. This blew up at the debate. She wouldn't shake his hand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm curious about from you is if this is something that voters are really talking about. Are they processing that? How are they processing that? What are you hearing actually on the ground? Sure. Well, I'll tell you what I told Senator Sanders yesterday, and that is what we're hearing on the doors is the same thing we've been hearing for the last year or two years. People are concerned about how are they going to pay for the medical debt that they've incurred. People are concerned about how are they going to deal with their student debt. People are concerned about what are we going to do in the next 10 years to take on climate change and make sure that farmers have the support they need as they continue to face uh, changing weather patterns, right? Um, people aren't, and I mean, frankly, to be very honest, the sort of political gossip stuff that might dominate some of the media is what turns voters off. So what we're doing is we're going back to voters like we always do. Like I said, very disciplined and focused and talking to them about the issues that we know are going to elect the next president of this country. So Misty, tell us a little bit about your strategy for impeachment. Of course, the senator is going to be locked up here in D.C. six days a week, possibly even all the way up to the Iowa caucuses. Have spoken to some senior members of the campaign here in the studio. But as an Iowa state director yourself, what's your plan in order to deal with that? Yeah, sure. Well, look, um, we stay very busy whether the senator is in the state or not. Uh, we're having organizing house parties almost a couple times a week um, in every single county across the state. We're doing live streams. We're, we're training our volunteers to be ready for caucus night. So to be very honest with you, we are sort of in the last uh, couple weeks here where all we need to be doing is getting out there and talking to as many people as possible, making sure that our supporters and volunteers are trained up and ready um, for caucus night. You may know there's almost 1,700 precincts in the state, and our plan is to have more than one volunteer at every single one representing the campaign, um, ready to bring home a victory on February 3rd. So what we're doing, obviously, is we have a big goals number this month. We're getting out there, knocking as many doors as possible, getting people plugged into our caucus training strategy. But also, we have an advantage, I think, that um, I'm very proud of in this campaign. There are uh, famous folks and very influential folks all across the country who support Senator Sanders, and they will be coming into the state to help us keep that energy high and the momentum rolling forward into caucus day. Mm -hmm. Well, and as you look to make that closing argument here, really in the final um, days, really just two weeks to go, more or less, um, I saw the campaign released a new ad. Let's take a look at that. If you are willing to fight for a government of compassion and justice and decency, not only will we win this election, but together we will transform this country. The pain that one person feels we have children who are hungry in America, if we have elderly people who can't afford their prescription drugs, you know what? That impacts you, that impacts me. We are all in this together. So what is the closing argument that you're bringing to the doors and, and um, talking about on the phone? Sure. Um, 
we can be anything we have the courage to see, right? In the in the words of Representative Ocasio-Cortez. And that's what this campaign has always been about, is we are taking on the hard issues and we're putting forward solutions and we gotta all put skin in the game. And so we're very honest with voters about the kind of challenge that's in front of us to really take on climate change, make Medicare for all a right, or, or uh, pass Medicare for all, make healthcare a human right. Um, but, you know, as a country, we have always done, you know, taken the hard path and done what's right. And that's what this country, this country and this campaign is all about. Um, we believe uh, that when we come together and we do build the largest grassroots coalition that we've ever seen, anything is possible. We can finally, after 100 years of talking about it, make healthcare a human right. We can finally uh, you know, decide together that we're ready to make college tuition free and affordable for everybody. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, I believe we are the climate candidate and the climate ca campaign. We are also ready to take on climate change in a way that brings our communities together, United Nights, folks, um, and and creates a future for all of us. So Miss, uh, it's all about taking on the hard issues and coming mm -hmm. together to win. Missy, one of the things that fascinates me about the Sanders movement is, is really making that same Trump bet of trying to bring new people into the political system. Are you confident at this point that you're going to have more people caucus for you on caucus day than did in 2016, given that there are so many other candidates in the race this time around? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I think at the end of the day, our momentum has been growing and our energy is growing. This is a different race. It's not a two way race. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if we do our job right, there'll be more people participating in this caucus than there was last time. And we fully expect to have at least the number of people who caucus for us, hopefully more um, on caucus night. And again, just really working very hard to build out that coalition to get there. Yeah, very, inter very interesting. Thank you, Misty. Thanks, Misty. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Next on Rising, the office, uh, the uh, director of the Office of National Drug Control Policy, who describes what the federal government is doing to combat the drug crisis. That's next.